Well, for more on this, we're joined by Mark Regev, the spokesman for the Israeli Prime Minister. Mark, good to have you on the programme. There's not a lot of optimism here at all, is there? And the US Secretary of State is very clear about where he thinks the problem lies. He says settlement construction is unhelpful and illegitimate. We're also concerned that the process isn't moving back, moving forward quickly enough. We'd like to see these negotiations succeed. I'd remind you that we're only three months into a nine-month process, so maybe it's too early yet to talk about a breakthrough. But we're willing to make the hard choices. We hope the Palestinians are too. When you talk about hard choices, uh, it's true, isn't it, that the latest plans last week for uh, a meeting between negotiators uh, was completely derailed by the announcement of um, over 3,500 new settler homes. Let me be clear. When I talk about hard choices, I'm talking about Israel fully abiding by all the understandings that were reached that allowed this uh, set of negotiations to start. And one of those understandings was the prisoner release. And as you've reported here on Al Jazeera, th there was overwhelming uh, disapproval of the government's decision uh, to release those terrorists from Israeli jails. Uh, something like 90 percent of the Israeli public. Yet my prime minister stood up against public opinion. He said he wants to give these talks a chance and he released the prisoners, as I say, even though that decision is overwhelmingly unpopular in my country. Now we're doing this because we want the process to work. We're willing to take those tough choices. We hope the Palestinians are too. Well, okay, coming back to tough choices, uh, as you've pointed out, Kerry says there needs to be real compromise and hard decisions from both sides. What is Israel afraid of? What's it afraid will happen if it puts settlement activity on hold just for the duration of the timetable that there is still to run on this process, which you've pointed out has six months to go? Well, we've done that in the past, I and mean, frankly, it didn't help. We did in the previous Netanyahu government. We did a 10-month settlement moratorium, and unfortunately, it didn't achieve the result that we thought it would achieve. It didn't allow the return to negotiations. I think the issue of the settlements, like all the other core issues, has to be negotiated between us and the Palestinians, and that's what we're calling for, serious face-to-face -face negotiations with all the core issues on the table. Do and we don't think grandstanding or creating artificial crises is going to help. A lot of these meetings obviously have been carried out in, 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 uh, in secret. Um, there have been some leaks, but uh, the, the overwhelming feeling uh, and the rumours swirling around is that those peace talks which were resumed in July are now on the brink of collapse. Uh, what, what's your assessment? Well, the talks are happening in secret, and rightfully so, because if there's any chance for diplomacy to succeed, that it, the talks have to be conducted in great discretion. But, but I mean, right now, Mark, it doesn't seem public, as though the, the, uh, the talks. Right now, it doesn't seem as though the talks are on uh, track to succeed. Well, we're only one third into a nine-month period, and from our point of view as Israel, we want the talks to succeed. We're willing to make. Uh, uh, all the effort and put all the energy in and to take the tough choices. We hope the Palestinians are too. Now, if peace is ever going to happen between Israelis and Palestinians, it has to be a two-way street. It's not enough that I want peace. Our Palestinian neighbors have to f finally say that they recognize the legitimacy of the Jewish state, that they're willing to live with us in peace. And, and that sort of message we have to hear from them. We also want to hear from them that they, want, they are willing to take seriously our legitimate security concerns, because there is no peace in this very volatile region without security. And, and without security and legitimacy, there can be no peace. But can, can I just bring it back to the, the question of settlements? I mean, you're still building settlements, even as you accuse the Palestinians of not being sincere. It, it, doesn't it suggest that Israel is not a sincere partner for peace? I disagree. We're, we're building in existing communities, in the Jewish neighborhoods of Jerusalem, and in the large settlement blocks, areas where you reported on Al Jazeera three, four years ago, you remember the famous Al Jazeera leaks, these are areas where the Palestinians themselves accepted the principle that they will remain in Israeli hands in final status peace agreement. And, and so, once again, we're not building new settlements, we're building inside existing neighborhoods, inside existing communities. Now, we say the settlement issue, along with all the other issues, borders, refugees, security, all these issues have to be on the table and negotiated, and that's what we want to do. Let me ask you a question about relations between Israel and the U.S. right now. I wonder how you assess them, because it does seem that U.S. interests are moving away from Israel's. For example, uh, Israel doesn't want to see new, um, the U.S. doesn't want to see new sanctions on Iran, for instance, uh, and Israel doesn't seem to be happy with that. So how do you assess relations between Israel, uh, Israel and the U.S. right now? 
Excellent. I mean, my Prime Minister is meeting John Kerry, I think it's every week almost, and they're on the well, phone. Well, I know, and the body every language is pretty days. telling, isn't uh, it? Because we have a in that meeting that we saw with uh, um, John Kerry and uh, the Israeli Prime Minister, the, 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 the tone of what they were saying was, was completely different. I was in the room and I saw two people who've known each other for, for I think, two, three decades already are working together and they're working together hard to try to solve the difficult issues. To try to reach peace between Israel and the Palestinians is not easy. If it would have been easy, it would have been done already. Well, well I saw a U.S. Secretary of State pointedly saying that both sides need to make compromises and hard decisions. And that seems to be uh, a veiled remark uh, towards Israel's actions. No, I, I would say exactly the same words, that for the peace to happen, both sides have to be willing to take the difficult choices. Israel is willing, and we've shown through our action that we're willing to take the difficult choices. Well, what do the you make of John is, Kerry's uh, is the comments that settlement building to do that? is illegitimate? Because that was the most pointed remark we've heard about settlement building from a U.S. Secretary of State, wasn't it? The, uh, the American position on settlements is well known, and so is ours. But the and word illegitimate, issue is does that not worry Israel? The, negotiating table. the word illegitimate, though, Mark, doesn't that worry well, the Israel? The issue of the settlements... I'm, I've heard words of, you know, of criticism before. All I'm saying is the issue of the settlements has to be solved in the framework of peace talks and we're ready to engage on the issue of settlements and all the issue, other issues as well. Ultimately, the only way to solve these issues is through dialogue and through talking. And one side coming to the table with the ability to, to, to make tough choices, we're ready to do that. And once again, I hope the Palestinians are too because we're not going to solve anything by creating artificial crises. We're not going to solve anything by inciting against the other side, saying the other side is evil and, uh, and calling them names. We want to engage with the Palestinians. We want peace and we're ready for the hard work to make that happen. What do you mean by inciting crises? Oh, I said artificial crises. Uh, we think that the negotiators should be talking, they should be dealing with all the half hard issues and that we shouldn't be creating artificial crises like we've seen maybe over the last few days. Look, ultimately, Israel has strictly abided by all the understandings that were reached to start this round of negotiations. Very strictly, we've honored all our understandings, even those that are very difficult, like the prisoner release. Sorry, can now, I just pick you up on, on one last keep. point, because we're coming They're to the end part here. Of the understandings. No, can I just, may I just finish the uh, point? It, it I just is actually just something that you were saying. If the Palestinians can't keep their understandings, well, this is what I want to ask you. I mean, you've just repeated what Benjamin Netanyahu said to John Kerry, that the Palestinians are continuing with incitement and creating artificial crises. I, I just want to know what that means. It means that instead of negotiating seriously and abiding by the understandings that were reached in the framework of these discussions, that they are not doing that. And, and I would say very specifically, if, if Palestinians don't honor the understandings that were reached in the negotiating process, how can they have, how can we have confidence that if we ever reach a peace agreement, they will honor those understandings? In other words, it's very important that we honor all the understandings that we've reached. And once again, I say unequivocally, Israel is fulfilling, implementing, honoring all our understandings that were reached in the framework of getting this recent round of negotiations back on track, even the very difficult and unpopular decisions like the, the release of terrorists. Mark. Good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here on the programme. Mark Regev there, the spokesman for the Israeli Prime Minister.